Today is a road trip day, about 40 kilometers away. Yikes. And the weather doesn't look too good. But it's not gonna rain, not yet, anyways. So it's it's cold, it's cooler than normal. <laughs> We've had like 40 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Celsius with a feel of 40 something. Yeah, it's been real hot. It's not good for my battery. Heat is bad for the battery, guys. So a lot of you guys have commented on uh, my YouTube channel, on my videos, and you're asking for like updates, right? Where'd you get this from? Where'd you get that from? The thing is, I post this stuff on Facebook and the Suran owners group and stuff like that. I totally forget to make a video out of it. I guess I'll make a video right now. So basically, the seat first. People are like interested in the way the seat is designed. Uh, the way I wanted it was this way because it's more comfortable. And the surface area of the stock seat is like flat. But now I wanted it to be like, you got a upright seat like this for traffic. And you got a backward cruising seat where you bend down a little bit more. And the seat on the back is a little bit higher. So yeah, that, that's actually pretty cool. Um, I feel more comfortable for sure. It's much better uh, in terms of, you know, riding and stability and all of that. And uh, the color, you know, I get got to choose the color. I got to choose the shape. I wanted these uh, hooves, you know, so it feels kind of like a Corbin seat or something like that. But guys, it's not expensive in Thailand. This thing cost me 400 baht. The guy literally did it completely handmade. It was very interesting to see that work. 400 baht, which is, um, what is that? just above ten dollars US dollars that's right that's right so a lot of you are talking about the brake pads on the Suran owners group and everybody has issues with the stock pads they wear out too fast they're not as powerful I, I know I've been there <laughs> so here's a picture of mine and these ones are cheap as they're like a hundred baht per set of pads and I bought 10 of them so 100 baht would be around 3 US dollars and they're super strong loving them and they last way longer so that's the second one uh, what else did I do um, the mirrors yeah people ask me about the mirrors uh, I just went to a normal standard motorbike shop uh, that have customizable parts for gas bikes um, it was a super bike shop, so you know things are a little bit more expensive there. Well, not a little bit, a lot more expensive. I was just too lazy to buy them online and wait for them, and I need, I wanted to see how they would look. You know, you, something like this you can't really buy because you're going to be looking at them, and also it changes the shape of the bike a little bit. Um, so these ones I bought for 2,000 baht, which is uh, 60, 70 US dollars, something like that. They're adjustable and all of that. It took me a while to... Oh, where? I, can I go up? Yes, I can go up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I'm going, man. Oh, nice. It's a new bridge. So you pass the red light. Nice. Thank you. All right, um, so yes, these are adjustable, but it took me a while to get used to them. They get loose here, right? And and this is this handlebar is a bike bicycle handlebar. It's not a motorbike handlebar. The motorbike handlebars here are have smaller holes, so they they're supposed to fit those type of handlebars, motorcycle handlebars. And uh, yeah, that was a bit of a trouble to install, and then. Um, when I did the motocross video in uh, Ubon, that nice fun part, they tend to get loose from all the jumps and all the vibrations. So I had to figure out like how do you tighten it properly, where, and uh, it's got it's got a few tricks up its sleeve of, of how to make it tighter. So yeah, that's done. It does get loose um, when I go on a on a train. 
Because uh, traveling on a train with this, going, going far away, is the most efficient way, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, so they get loose because they has to be tightened down onto the the, the locomotive, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so it's up against the wall and just they, you know, it gets loose. But all it takes is an Allen key, and it just tighten back. That's it. So uh, carry your Allen key set. I would advise whenever you travel. It's very useful. A lot of the bolts on the bike are Allen keys. So like the pads or something, if you want to adjust the pads on the go, or uh, the 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 head crank is making noises or something. You know, you gotta just work on that with an Allen key. That's it. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, you've noticed I don't have the display here, and I have this display and this thing here. So this is the ASCII 4000 controller. Um, a friend of mine, you know, communicated with me through Facebook and gave me some videos and stats, and I was like, "All right, let's do it." So the ASCII controller is is a much more powerful controller than the stock X controller that I had. My X controller was the Beta X controller, which is basically exactly the same as what's on the market. And I had to ins I wanted to install this this controller. Now, it took a while. It's easier with two people. I can tell you that. And some of the cables, you know, they, they got to crimp them. So once you crimp things, sometimes it doesn't work out 100%. The cable doesn't communicate. And uh, so the signal doesn't come out through the small cables. So it's got a lot of different cables in the harness. And that you connect to the stock harness of the bike. So yeah, here and there we had to play around, test this and uh, the connections and everything. Uh, once that was done, it worked. Then, uh, it wasn't the same bike. Um, it had like, the throttle wasn't as responsive. Um, uh, the power was a lot more, but it ate the battery like insane. I went like 20 kilometers and the battery was dead. So uh, I had to use the software um, and the only way to get to the software is through the people that supply the controller. So thanks for that. And then from there on it was uh, a lot of, you know, how can I say, test and play, you know? Change settings, test, play, oh not, not right, let's do it again. So uh, it took about, what was it, two weeks? two weeks about that to set it up perfectly so now the perfect way that I have it at gives me 10% more top speed ah, well the stock on 100% battery the stock controller gave me 80 grams per hour that's it I couldn't get more this one I get constantly 85 to 87 kilometers per hour and on a downhill with very little headwind and, and I'm crouching, that's when I get 100 kilometers per hour, man. That's not bad on the stock 60 volt battery and the BMS. So that's pretty cool. Um, the reason I like this thing is because it's future proof. If I want to get a 72 volt battery, I can. And the controller will do it automatically um, what else did I change yeah little mud guards here and there you can buy them online for like uh, fucking five bucks ten bucks they're like just plastic flat things and you just look where you want to shape it into where you want to position it into and you just use zip ties and that's it and they look good and they work that's what I needed. I just needed something to work because rainy season is coming. It's not fun, guys. It's not fun without my guards.
freaking face gets sprayed and shit. I got the rear mudguard that was supplied. My friend found it for me, so he supplied it to me um, with the controller. Thanks for that again. And that was super useful. How it, my back doesn't get sprayed. Now with these cheap mudguards in the front, my front doesn't get sprayed. Woo! It's a commuter bike, 100% now. Yes! Oh, let's go downhill. Okay, we're going to 90. 92. Oh, I did the downhill. A bit too late. <laughs> so 92, yeah. It's nice. Acceleration, I feel, is maybe 2% better. Not that much better in terms of torque acceleration. I got a new chain, guys. Um, yeah, so the stock chain was like some just standard chain and it started making noises and you gotta align it more, you gotta lubricate it even more Ugh, boring and then I got the uh, o-ring chain you man it's so much better it sounds so much better it's smoother and um, it's got this uh, like like a supercharger sound you know like a gas car instead of a turbo they put a supercharger and it's got that type of sound. It's freaking awesome. I don't know if you guys can hear it over the microphone. But it's like... Uh, yeah, it's cool. You can definitely hear it when you're riding. It's like a supercharger. Like, power! I love power! Yes. And then I also have to change my primary belt. Because after my fun in the motocross there was like a stone in it inside the belt and it's just making noise not not terrible noise and still work perfectly but once we replaced the belt to a new belt oh man the bike is so much more quiet and so much more responsive and the coasting is more before the coasting was like it really reduced your speed a lot so I will say that increased the efficiency as well. Yeah. But but one thing guys, oh my god, it's quite hard to do that, to change the belt. Uh, I hope I don't have to do that soon <laughs> again. It would be terrible. A lot of people on the Suron group are changing the suspension. I'm happy with this suspension, front and back. It's pretty good. Good enough for the commuting. It's adjustable so you can tighten it to be stronger that's why now it's a little bit stronger because uh, I'm mostly on asphalt so oh also I removed all the sensors so the first thing I did when I got this bike was remove the brake sensors the cables that were here because they used to cut off the motor if you press the brake next I dug around I saw the kickstand sensor cable melted because apparently it touches the motor and from all the heat and the weather like this melt it <laughs> that's why it didn't work and uh, there's also one more sensor on this bike it's called the tilt sensor so when you tilt the system will shut off yeah so I removed all of these things and my next upgrade and I think the last upgrade I'll do it will be this 72 volt battery I want it to be exactly the size as this because this is super convenient um, taking out the battery, being able to remove it, super convenient, you know, going to work, whatever emergency charging or wherever I want to charge and the bike can go there, the battery can. So that's what you want. Yeah, so 72 volt battery. So right now we are, you know, put the settings and everything. We are doing the max that this battery can do, which is 85 amps at 60 volts. As a max is no more, BMS will cut off the battery, the power. It will cut off, yes. Um, but getting the 72 volt battery will be almost the same capacity. So you get about the same range on full power all the time. And you will get 200 something freaking amps. More than double. It's going to be 130, 140 kilometer per hour machine. Yeah. Peace out. See you guys later.